Hello and welcome to C and Data Structures training series. Uh, in this session, we are going to learn about dynamic memory allocation. Uh, so, in this lecture, we are uh, touching what is dynamic memory allocation, how dynamic memory allocation works, what all are the functions that we use to allocate the memory dynamic, and we will be doing some exercise questions. So, what is dynamic memory allocation? So, in case uh, if you if any programmer wants some portion of memory to be allocated for his program, he can call some functions which will allocate that piece of memory or that amount of memory so that he can use for uh, storing the data and performing some operations. So, just to state it again, programmers explicitly request the system to allocate memory and once we request it the function that we are calling will return the starting at uh, starting address of the chunk of memory which is allocated so what is the starting uh, address of uh, memory allocated suppose we have uh, asked to assign us say 10 bytes of memory so uh, it will give us the the function that we are calling will give us the address of the first byte uh, so uh, what is required when we uh, do dynamic memory allocation uh, the most important thing is uh, when we uh, when we use dynamic memory allocation we should take very uh, good care of freeing the memory explicitly so uh, Suppose we have reserved 10 bytes of memory for our program, we should always be careful to free the memory so that uh, we will not run out of the memory when we run uh, large programs or we run a lot of programs. Uh, when not in use, the memory has to be freed. So how to allocate the memory dynamically? Uh, in C, uh, we have a library function stdlib.h. Uh, in stdlib.h we have four functions that do dynamic memory allocation uh, first function is say malloc uh, so malloc allocates a requested, a requested size of bytes and return the pointer to first byte allocated to, uh, to it calloc uh, calloc allocates uh, space for array elements initializes to zero and then returns a pointer to memory free as the name suggests, it will free the uh, space, whatever we have allocated. Realloc will uh, use to uh, reallocate the memory space. So, what is malloc? Uh, the name malloc stands for memory allocation. Uh, the function malloc reserves a block of memory of uh, specified size and then return a pointer of which. Uh, it can be used or typecasted into a pointer of any form. So, here is a syntax uh, pointer say ptr equal to uh, let's uh, visit this portion malloc of byte size and this will return a void pointer and then we need to typecast it to whatever type of pointer we want. So, for example, ptr equal to malloc of 100 bytes or 100 ints so, uh, because we have given size of ints so it will give us 100 memory which is equivalent to 100 of 100 integers and then we will be typecasting it to a integer pointer so this is how you have to use malloc in your function malloc in your code calloc the name calloc stands for continuous allocation the only difference between malloc and calloc is that malloc allocates a single block of memory whereas calloc allocates multiple blocks of uh, memory each of same size and set all bytes to zero so uh, calloc uh, calloc will also one do one more one extra thing is it will initialize the uh, memory or it will initialize the bytes to zero it will not uh, just give the bytes as it is it will clean up whatever is there in the uh, memory space and give it to you 
so this is how calloc is used it is not much different from how malloc is used uh, we just need to use calloc number of uh, number of memory space we want which type of which data type uh, we want and then type casting so for example we want space equal which can hold 25 float variables so we'll say uh, we want memory which is equal to 25 floats so size of float 25 and then this will return a void pointer which we need to type cast it to float pointer free uh, so dynamic dynamically allocated memory with either calloc or malloc does not get written into its own uh, the programmer must use free explicitly to reserve the space uh, to release the space so whatever memory we request from the system we should give it back to the system the process of giving back to the system is free just call a free pointer so in this case we are uh, storing this address in this variable ptr so whatever memory we want to free just call uh, free and that pointer that uh, which we have set up to hold the memory location relock so if previously allocated memory is insufficient or more than uh, sufficient then you can change the memory size previously allocated using relock so what does it mean it means suppose you want more memory uh, in your program you can do relock or suppose you have reserved a lot uh, more memory than you needed then also you can use relock so how relock works it's uh, same it's same uh, ptr equal to relock and ptr and the new size okay so it will relocate uh, it will increase or decrease the size of uh, memory that you have already uh, used uh, that you have already got reserved using either malloc or calloc so here it is used ptr equal to relloc ptr 10 so we are relocating uh, uh, the ptr to 10 so this is how uh, c code looks like when we use malloc function uh, for uh, for using malloc we should include std stdlib.h this is very important uh, then it's a main function int n int i and a pointer ptr and sum equal to zero so enter the name of uh, enter the number of elements that we want say it takes uh, we are storing it in n and then we are allocating memory uh, up to of n n, num, n number of integers so this is how we are allocating memory allocated using malloc so so if pointer P, ptr equal to equal to null we are checking if whatever memory that uh, we have got here is is null then we print error memory is not allocated in case memory is not allocated ptr will always be null print uh, so and we will be exiting our uh, uh, function so if ptr is not null we will directly come to here so we say enter the elements in the array it will do a scan f and uh, allocate uh, and assign each and every element or initialize each and every element with whatever we want and then at the same time we are calculating the sum also so sum equal to sum plus uh, value at address ptr plus i okay so uh, printf sum equal to sum and once we printed the sum we will be freeing the memory so this is how uh, malloc is used it's very simple we are here we are allocating a memory uh, doing the operation and then freeing the memory uh, so this is an example of how calloc is used this is also same uh, the logic of program or operation of the program is same it will calculate the sum of uh, input uh, numbers that we get input from the user 
so here we are doing hash include stdlib stdli attach in main again we are in uh, declaring uh, integer n integer i integer pointer and sum equal to zero we are getting input from uh, user that how many integers you want then we are assigning a memory of n integers into a pointer we will be checking if pointer is null that means if memory is actually allocated or not if memory is not allocated that means ptr is null then we are saying that okay memory is null and exiting our uh, program if ptr is not equal to null then we will be uh, coming here and we will be getting an input from user uh, we will be doing scanf and sum and then we will be printing the sum and once we are done we will be freeing the loop freeing the memory free ptr then return zero so this is how uh, calloc is used again uh, i'll uh, reiterate uh, most important part is including the library function assigning the memory and freeing the memory so this is how realloc is work works hash include stdio.h hash include stdb stdlib.h then in main so we have a pointer ptr equal to i n1 n2 uh, enter the size of array say n1 now we are allocating a memory of n of n1 integers uh, the address of previously allocated memory is like this we are printing at all the addresses now scan f enter the new memory uh, size of new new array so we will be getting an input in n2 now we are reallocating ptr to n2 and then we will be printing all the memory locations that uh, that we got while doing the realloc so this is uh, what this program does uh, it will allocate memory of n1 size prints the addresses and then it will reallocate the memory of n2 size and print the addresses so this is a very basic example of how to use realloc okay so this is like uh, exercise this is a coding exercise that i want you to perform uh, on your own uh, this is a very simple exercise uh, which is based on previous concepts that we have covered so write a function to take row and column as an input from user initialize the two-dimensional matrix and then uh, take user input for each row and column element okay so first you need to take uh, input from the user how many rows you want how many columns you want then you need to realloc uh, then you need to allocate a memory of n in, uh, rows into column and then run a loop to to get a value of each and every element of a matrix from the user and then print it so this is how you can get more and more understanding on how to use the dynamic memory allocation so the second question is extend the above mentioned problem to print matrix in reverse order so once you get a matrix here just print it in the reverse order so this is this will give you more and more uh, hands on on understanding matrix and using dynamic memory allocation so this brings us to the end of this session i hope you enjoyed this session you get uh, I hope you get more and more understanding on how to use dynamic memory allocation in C. Uh, dynamic memory allocation is very important when uh, we talk about using data structures and um, when we talk about dynamic uh, programs which are using dynamic inputs from the user where we are not certain about the size of input that we can get from the user so uh, just learn uh, just try to get more and more understanding on dynamic memory allocation and you will be very comfortable in uh, data structures and all once again thanks for joining
I am sure you enjoyed learning from this video. Please like the video and if you have any doubts regarding this video, please comment us in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos. Do look out for other related videos in our playlist. For more information, visit our website now. Keep learning with IntelliPat.